And welcome back, everybody. Matt Vaskersian prepping you for tonight's AAA PCL action. But before we get to the ball game, let's have a look at the Bowman Prospect Spotlight. Chester Adams is in the glow as the first round pick makes his AAA debut in this one. Yeah, he's one of the prized prospects in this organization. And he's been playing well enough down in AA to earn himself the promotion up here to the AAA level. I'm sure he's excited about making his debut, and he should be, but now he has to prove himself all over again. Now, the competition at this level is better, so the organization will want to see him perform well here before they think about giving him the call up to the big leagues. They certainly don't want to rush him up there before he's ready, so it'll be interesting to see how he adapts. Okay, we're looking forward to this one. Lineups and first pitch on the show coming up next. Hey, what's up, guys? Tony here, and you're watching some more MLB 15. This is obviously Road to the Show, and this is Chester Adams. And this is actually the game that I had mentioned in my last video where uh, I said that I got promoted to AAA. So this is the very first game that my character is pitching in AAA. And uh, I mentioned in the last video, and I'll mention it now, so this is a spoiler alert if you're concerned about it. <laughs> but anyways... Um, I actually pitched longer than I thought because I, I didn't think I was in in the game that long before I made I uh, threw the first for a pickoff and uh, the player comes out with a shoulder it was actually a, a torn shoulder because <laughs> I was looking through the videos and it's like holy crap it was a torn shoulder off a pickoff the first it's ridiculous so anyway so yeah this is the first this is the first outing in at AAA I got promoted and uh, it actually lasted longer than I thought so anyways we'll uh, we'll enjoy watching that while while I talk about something uh, about the uh, trade deadline so it's kind of funny because uh, I, I posted most of this stuff on Facebook so excuse me to people who follow me on Twitter because I just didn't there's not enough characters <laughs> to express what I wanted to express because the, the trade deadline came and went and I have to admit like this year the trade deadline I was really like anxious like I, I just you know speculation was everywhere and so there were some people like uh, Ken Roden Rosenthal with Fox Sports that you know tweeting out stuff, and then Fox Sports was retweeting his crap. And then, uh, but basically, the gist was is that that he was absolutely sure the Padres were going to be big time sellers. Like every damn sports writer, that, you know, for the San Diego UT or uh, ESPN or what have you. You know, there was a bunch of sport ri sports writers that were were just predicting a fire sale. And I got into an argument with someone one, not not too long ago, about maybe like a month or so ago, about a sale, you know, fire sale. And uh, and I was getting on the author for being so pessimistic and just, you know, like why are we selling this team that we just put together four months or five months ago? And so, uh, you know, somebody commented back like, oh, I think you read it wrong or whatever. So I read it again. I'm just like, yeah, he said he's basically saying he thinks the Padres should sell everything off. And then closer to the trade deadline, there are all these talks about how the Padres need to offload some of these heavy contracts. Like, Shield has this, like, huge contract that's backloaded. And, uh, you know, it's, like, things like that. Um, so these other contracts, like, Jed Jerko's a contract that a lot of people have been talking about because it's owed $33 million within, like, the next handful of years or whatever. And some people are very critical about his contract. But uh, so anyways, there's money that people feel that the Padres have to get off their books. And so they felt the trade deadline was it. And of course, like a day or, day or two, I think it was a day or two before the deadline, uh, I think it, it was reported that the Padres ownership said that, you know, or not the ownership, but the front office reported that they're, requ they're not required to drop any payroll. So like money's not an issue as everyone was speculating. So it just seemed like the media was trying to manufacture reasons to justify the Padres selling off their selling off the team which doesn't make sense to me there's a you know like uh, I don't know if you guys do this but I go to the Padres website well I mean your respective team's website but I go to the Padres website a lot and I go to the news forum and I check take a look at, at the articles but more than anything else I want to see what like my fellow fans are saying and I'll read through the fans uh, all the comments and stuff um, then there's some people that are just way out there and they're just just unhappy with the team but then there's some very sensible very practical people and I find myself in that more sensible practical arena uh, just because of the fact that I don't I didn't expect that the trades that we made in the winter in the spring 
I don't. I never anticipated those on, on like transporting us to the World Series. I think a lot of Padres fans wrongly felt that because of these these winter and spring trades, that suddenly we would be a contender. You know, and I'm, I mean, I played baseball all my life. I understand teams have to gel. I also understand that um, if you want to build a World Series team, you got to spend a lot more money, and you got to really get in. You know, almost like a whole new team, like the Marlins have done twice. That's how they won the World Series. They pretty much built a team, they won the World Series, and then they sold their team off, and they went to just to be mediocre. And until they decided, the ownership's like, let's win a World Series again. Let's buy all these players. Let's win the series, and then we'll just sell it off because whatever, we need it. Um, but there wasn't enough there. I mean, when you look at the lineup, there's still gaps in our lineup. A lot of people like to say that the Padres' defense is pretty terrible. Um, that's, you know, whatever. Uh, for me, though, what's inconsistent is, is our lineups. At times, we don't really have a good... We don't have an everyday shortstop. A lot of people don't like Jerko at second base. I think he's fine at second base. I think that he has a lot of potential. And I think that for the most part, this is what bothers me about the Padres organization and Padres fans in general, uh, some of them, is that uh, a lot of them are very impatient. They're just, they'll look at Jed Jerko. So Jed Jerko had a fantastic, I'm going to use him as a case in point, obviously, but a uh, fantastic rookie year. I think he was like second or third in rookie of the year that year. Uh, and he comes back the next year and he gets hurt and he has a subpar year. And then this spring, so he's in his third season now. This spring, he, he had a very slow spring. He just wasn't hitting well in, in uh, spring training, that is. And then he didn't really hit well in April. Uh, I think, I have to look at May. He didn't hit well at all. And then he's just, uh, they stopped playing him. So then he was hitting sporadically in May because they had Corey Spangenberg playing. And he was, like, not doing all that well. And he kind of caught fire right before he got hurt. Uh, and they sent Jerko down to AAA to get some at-bats. And he was hitting really well down Triple A, so call him back up. And so he's been kind of hit and miss, but uh, he's had, you know, his average has gone up. He's hitting better now. Uh, and that's all I think he needed because if you look at a lot of the players that we traded away recently, Anthony Rizzo is one that comes to mind uh, a number of years ago now. But that was just, he had like 100 and something, 113 or 115 major league at bats. And then there's like, he sucks, get rid of him. And it's just like, really? You're going to offload talent like that? And then now look at him. Like, he's a phenomenal player. I'm not saying that Jed Jerko is destined to be like that, but I'm just saying that um, we have players with a lot of potential that we're not patient enough with. So, you know, my feeling is just like, hey, if you want him because we moved him from third to second, if you want him to be our everyday second baseman, give him that shot, let him play, and then see where the chips fall off that. But anyways, everyone was just really concerned about the fact that we didn't trade like we were like we were supposed to you know the major a lot of the analysts are a little pissy about it the, the Rosenthal himself wrote a very scathing article about how San Diego basically made a mistake and it's just like I don't know it seems like we're playing well you know you're not gonna win every game and um, but you know we're playing well we're, we're we're up like right now we're over a 700 winning percentage from the last I don't know how many games it's been, and they predicted, you know, someone said, hey, look, if they can be, and our schedule is very, very, very favorable for the next couple of months, so um, if you could, you know, get a 6-0, like a 6-0-8 or whatever winning percentage for the rest of the season, we'll, we'll win like 88 games. I'm like, I'm okay with winning 88 games in this division. It's not going to win the division. I'm pretty sure the Dodgers are going to be 100-game winners uh, or close to it. Um and to be honest, frankly, I'm not at all concerned about making the playoffs this year. I just want to see the Padres do better than 500, and I want to show, I want them to show free agents and basically Major League Baseball, and so you know that that we're an organization that's not going to sell off just because we're having a bad year, especially immediately after pulling in all this talent. That'd be ridiculous. I don't understand why everyone wanted them to sell. It's like. We're building something here, people. Let's build. This is a two, three, four year process. This is not build a team, go to World Series, and live long and prosper after that. No, it, it takes you know it takes a while. You know sometimes maybe you know have all the pieces in place, uh, and it, it requires a couple of trades, a little tinkering there. But you want to keep a core group of guys around. You can't just sell off the team and expect the next year to be great or else you're not going to have it it's just it's that <laughs> that's just the way sports works you want to keep your talent foster them build around them not sell them off after every bad year i would say you know for the trade deadline i'm perfectly happy with the padres doing what they did honestly uh and hopefully in the winter time we'll build from there and, and next year will be better and uh, just keep building that's really essentially what i would want to see the padres do 
I think the clear winners of the trade deadline were the Blue Jays. I mean, they had two two huge trades with Tulowinski and uh, with David Price. And honestly, I was very jealous. I wanted the Padres to make a deal for Tulo. Like, he's a guy that when, when we watched him play here uh, gosh, last month or so, and I was like, I want him. You know, I want him on the Padres so bad. He's He hits for average, 300 average. He hits for power. The game that I watched, he hit a home run against the Padres. It was like, dude, I want him so bad to play shortstop for us. But uh, he's got a huge contract, and the Blue Jays, I know, are taking on a huge financial risk with Price and Tulowitzki, but um, they seem to be moving. They really want to win the... You know, and that's good. I think that's that's a, that's finally an organization that deserves. You know, they put a lot of time and effort, and they deserve a good baseball team. They're kind of my winners of the of the trade deadline. So, for your teams, how did your teams fare at the trade deadline? Let me know in the comment section, right? So, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing, and I shall talk to you guys later. Gary France will stride in. He singled in his last plate appearance. He'll hold off on the slider to start the at-bat. It's ball one. Now here's the pitch. Lined hard toward short. And he'll make that play look easy as the throw is in time to end the inning. Nothing across here this half of the inning. Kevin Leroy will step in now to lead off the inning as his guys look to maybe break the rut they've been stuck in. Yeah, and after that first inning, it's been all zeros since. And once he kind of got settled into that groove, he's been a difficult nut to crack. And the off-speed pitch is taken here, a ball and a strike. And the pitch. Swing and a shot back up the middle. A reaching try as he knocks it down. But he'll have to just put this one in his pocket, and I'd imagine this will be an infield single to start the inning. Yeah, we see a lefty and a right-hander start to loosen up in the bullpen. Moises Sierra is in for the third time as he swings and misses at that one. It's nothing and one. Well, you can tell he's trying to work that pitch away, but he might have left that one a little more over the plate than he intended. Now a move over to first, but the runner is back easily. So, unfortunately, it looks like he's going to come out of the game now with an apparent right shoulder injury. That's always concerning, so hopefully it's not as bad as it looks. George Jimenez will be summoned now to take over following the injury. An entertaining game all in all, so if we have to choose one who stood out among all others, why not go with this man right here? He's our top player.